Hi to anyone who may be watching. This week, um, as I was reading in the Doctrine and Covenants, section 42 really stood out to me. In this section, there are some commandments that are almost exactly what God told Moses in the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery. And then along with those, um, the Lord includes lots of other commandments for us to follow. So I just wanted to talk about those for a little bit. Instead of saying, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, the Lord instead says, thou shalt not lie at all. It's not just about your neighbor. It's at all, ever. Thou shalt not lie. And that's pretty clear. And then regarding our neighbor, he says in verse 27, thou shalt not speak evil of thy neighbor, nor do him any harm. I feel like that's an interesting distinction from thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. In April 2012, President Uchtdorf gave a talk about this. When we feel hurt, angry, or envious, it is quite easy to judge people. This topic could actually be taught in a two-word sermon. When it comes to hating, gossiping, ignoring, ridiculing, holding grudges, or wanting to cause harm, please apply the following. Stop it. We have to stop judging others and replace judgmental thoughts and feelings with a heart full of love for God and his children. Is this difficult to do? Yes. How is it done? Through the love of God, let us be kind. Let us forgive. Let us talk peacefully with each other. Let the love of God fill our hearts. Let us do good unto all men. And when Jesus was on the earth, he taught us to love all people, not just the people who are being kind, not the people who are our friends. He said, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. And this could be people at school, at church, at work, and including in our homes. There are times when, you know, we're just not friendly with our own family members, or our family members are unkind to us, it's kind of hard to want to show love and be kind when someone else is obviously trying to offend or hurt you in some way with their words or actions. And we don't have to be offended though. We can choose love. We can choose the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I believe this is what he is asking us to do, where we choose love and we choose kindness and we choose good things, even when no one else around us is choosing that. And the best way, I think, to teach our children is to be that example and to try. And of course, we're not gonna be perfect at this. I do not claim to be an expert at this at all. I need help every single day to try to be a kind person who just is loving and patient and all of those things because I'm not very good at those things. We all need that reminder to show love to others and to pray for them when they're having a hard time and treating us poorly. So when it says in the scripture, thou shalt not speak evil of thy neighbor, nor do him any harm, that includes our family members, that we shouldn't talk unkindly about them when they're not in the room, um, that we should try to build each other up and remember that only those things which are edifying and uplifting and encouraging and loving, but only those things are of God and everything else is not. The greatest part about not being perfect at these things is that God knew it would be this way. And he provided the Savior so that we can repent and keep trying and be filled with the love of God and the Spirit even when we don't feel like it. There's been times in my life where I've been totally angry and just so frustrated with my kids. Um, but in that moment, I remembered to pray and to ask for help, to be patient and to be kind, where I was able to hold my tongue and able to forgive and um, just understand that the reason they're being that way is because they're feeling hurt inside and to try to understand that hurt and to love them anyway. And, and like I said, I'm not perfect at this. There's plenty of times where I just yell back or get mad or whatever. And so it's just, again, this process of becoming a disciple of Jesus Christ is a process and it's something that requires our efforts and our intentions every single day. Another verse that stood out to me in section 42 was verse 42, thou shalt not be idle. If you look up the definition for idle, it says avoiding work, lazy, not working or unemployed. I feel like this commandment is completely opposite of what the world is teaching us today. I feel like um, the world is telling us that we should earn a lot of money and then use that money to relax. 
and go and buy your section of the beach and just have people serve you all day long and you never have to work again. Also, the word retirement comes with a lot of um, expectations that these people are now not working or that they are relaxing or going on trips all the time. I feel like God is telling us that that is not the goal. Relaxation forever is not what is meant for our good. God is telling us thou shalt not be idle. God is telling us not to be lazy. Um, and I don't, and I'm not saying that we shouldn't ever have, you know, a break or some kind of refreshment or rejuvenation. All of that's good and, and fine, but it shouldn't be the ultimate end goal of our lives where we're going to retire and then never work again. <laughs> this life is full of work. Sometimes life can be challenging and it can feel overwhelming and it can feel like the work that we do never ends, especially as mothers of young children. The diaper changing never ends. The dishes never end. The laundry never ends. All these things never end. Um, they just keep going and going. You have to feed your family every single day. And I believe that we'll be happier if we learn to love this work. Instead of wishing our life was different, instead of wishing we didn't have to do it, there was a point in my life where I was kind of depressed for a few years. And I believe part of that was because I was punishing myself for the work that I was doing. Instead of learning to love that work, I was feeling self-pity over the obligations that I had. And so I feel like learning to love work and learning to accept it and learning that it's just part of life and that our success comes from the work that we are willing to do. I just like that. I needed that reminder that work gives us purpose and work is good for us. The Lord says in section 58 of the Doctrine and Covenants, it is not meat that I should command in all things. For he that is compelled in all things, the same as a slothful and not a wise servant. Verily I say, men should be anxiously engaged in a good cause and do many things of their own free will and bring to pass much righteousness. For the power is in them, wherein they are agents unto themselves, and inasmuch as men do good, they shall in no wise lose their reward. The Lord does not want us to be idle. He wants us to work. He wants us to, to do good. And also, he doesn't want to have to tell us every single step of the way. So the Lord says, thou shalt not be idle. And I think we can all maybe think about how that could apply to our own lives. In verse 40, the Lord says, thou shalt not be proud in thy heart. This one is so hard and so widespread. This is the sin that we all have, right? We all kind of have this desire to protect ourselves and to prove ourselves right and to um, wish that other people would validate our experience. Um, this is the one that we all feel at some level where we want people to understand us and to show us that we're important and all of these things. And God says here, thou shalt not be proud in thy heart. So when you're at home and you're in a discussion with somebody and there's a little bit of a disagreement, guess what? We don't need to prove anything to anyone. God says, thou shalt not be proud. We can just humble ourselves and allow the other person their experience and allow them their ideas and allow them all their things. And it doesn't have to mean anything about us. It's okay to admit that you're wrong. It's okay to admit the possibility that you might be wrong. The, the proud part of us never wants to admit that we could be wrong. It, th it feels like there's danger there for some reason. It's, it's so easy to put up walls and to want to defend ourselves against other people and their, their accusations or whatever. And we don't need to do any of that. We don't have to be proud. We could just admit that we have some flaws and, and, and be humble and say, yeah, you know, I didn't do that so well, I'm sorry. It's okay to be the one that wants to apologize first and who wants to bring peace back to the relationship or the situation. And if you haven't read the talk by Ezra Taft Benson, The Pride Talk, I will link that down below. It's a very good talk and it's worth reading over and over again to remind ourselves. Verse 22 is an interesting scripture. Thou shalt love thy wife with all thy heart and shalt cleave unto her and none else. Your spouse is the only other person besides God that you are commanded to love with all your heart. In verse 29, the Lord says, If thou lovest me, thou shalt serve me and keep all my commandments. That's how he wants us to show him that we love him. Sometimes we can come up with ideas of what we think our spouse might like or what might be loving to them. But really, the only way to know if what we are doing is showing them love is if we ask them and if they tell us what is loving to them. 
It's easy when you live with someone every single day to take them for granted and to forget all the good things that they do and to only focus on the things that bother you. So this scripture is just a good reminder to kind of reflect on how we're doing with our spouse. Are we showing them love? Are we being kind? Are we treating them well? Because this is a commandment from the Lord to love them with all your heart. Only you and the Lord and your spouse can figure out what that means for your relationship. In verse 30, it says, Thou wilt remember the poor and consecrate of thy properties for their support. And inasmuch as ye impart of your substance to the poor, ye will do it unto me. And he says that later too in verse 38, For inasmuch as ye do it unto the least of these, ye do it unto me. And that's an important part of the gospel of Jesus Christ is taking care of those who need our help, those who are less fortunate than we are. One of the verses that I memorized is in this section. It's verse 61. If thou shalt ask, thou shalt receive revelation upon revelation, knowledge upon knowledge, that thou mayest know the mysteries and peaceful things, that which bringeth joy, that which bringeth life eternal. And when I think about that scripture, I think how willing the Lord is to give us answers and to bless our lives. And that the thing that is holding us back is that we aren't asking. We aren't making the time to be quiet and still and listen to, for those answers and watch for them. I believe the Lord is willing to give us more and that we're just kind of living below our privileges, really, if we're not asking and seeking re personal revelation and there have been times in my life where I've been good at these things and times where I've been terrible at these things. Uh, most of the time I'm somewhere in between. And I feel like we really have to focus and be intentional to think about what do we actually want the Lord to help us with? What was that thing I prayed for this morning? What's that answer I'm looking for? And, and to kind of look for the answer as you just are living your life. It takes effort to do that. It's a lot easier to just not ask anything at all and to just live your life and as things come, you deal with them. And so that's where I feel like a lot of times I'm living below my privilege. I believe that God is willing to reveal and willing and wanting to give me personal revelation and I'm just not asking and being intentional and focusing my efforts. I feel like this is easier when there's something kind of dramatic happening in your life something maybe overwhelming or whatever and that's when you're like praying hard and praying for answers and wanting help that's when it's easier to to do these things because you feel like you really need an answer like soon <laughs> and so it's harder to to ask questions and look for personal revelation when there's not really any deadline or timeline there's not really anything pressuring you to get that answer um, and so I wish I was better at this. I wish I was better at being still and looking for the answers and being intentional and focusing my thoughts. I believe God wants to reveal things to us and give us answers and that the thing that's holding us back is ourselves. That's all I'm going to say about Doctrine and Covenants section 42 today. Now I just want to talk a little bit about something I recognized um, as I was dealing with my children this week. So a couple of my children at different times were talking to me about something, maybe a challenge that they had or something they were going to do. And as a parent and as someone who's lived longer on the earth and has had more experience, I was trying to give them some advice, I guess. I was just trying to help my kids. I wasn't trying to make them angry or anything. The reaction I received from my kids was something like, I heard what you said, but I'm gonna do it my way anyway. I kind of felt frustrated because I feel like, hey, I know you. I know what you like. I know what you're good at. I know what's going to make you happy. And I know what's going to be a dead end trail. Or at least I have a pretty good guess. And I feel like they were just so adamant in whatever it was, the path they wanted to take, that they didn't want to hear what I had to say. And I just reflected on that for a moment as I had a couple of children, like I said, who did that to me around the same time. And I just had this feeling that we all do this to God. He knows us. He knows what our challenges are. He knows what we're good at. He knows what's going to make us happy. And how often do we just disregard his counsel altogether by not asking, by just living our lives and doing our things and pushing things through? How often do we think that we know the way it should be? How often do we think we know 
how it's supposed to turn out. <laughs> and so um, that was a good reminder for me that what these kids are doing to me is the same thing that I'm doing to Heavenly Father. Also, as I was just going about my life, you know, I'm cleaning up the house and I'm doing all these things and I'm giving the kids rides, I'm doing meals, I'm doing cleanup, I'm doing all these things. And sometimes the reaction I get from my kids is, well, what else are you going to do for me? <laughs> sometimes it feels hard to be a mom when your kids don't understand all the things that we're doing for them. All the things that are happening in the background and all the work that we're doing that they don't even recognize, they don't know about, they don't realize how much time it takes, they don't realize that we're doing this out of love for them. And that same feeling of that is what I'm doing to God. I don't recognize sometimes all the good that he's given to me and all the things in the background and all the things that are working so well, I don't give enough gratitude for those things. It's so easy to focus on challenges and problems and, um, and it's easy to ask Heavenly Father for help to make things better. It's so easy to be just like our kids where we're continually asking for more. How many things does the Lord do behind the scenes that we don't even know about? So I was just feeling like that's the same thing that I do to God. I, I ask Him to help make things better in my life and I don't take enough time to recognize what's already working and what's already good and what I'm already grateful for. And I feel like that's a reminder that I keep getting from Heavenly Father that I need to be more grateful. I do believe that everything that's happening in our lives is happening for a reason and that all of these things are gonna to work together for our good, even and especially the things that we don't like and that are hard. Thanks to all of you who made it to the end of this video. And just for anyone who might be interested to know, I have pretty much failed at my six o'clock goal this month. <laughs> I just did not pull it together. So I might just repeat that for next month. <laughs>